Hey guys, welcome back to our episode of River Rat Labs. In today's episode, we're going to be diving in deep and covering all topics related to fishing in the spring, pre-spawn, with Texas rigs, and jigs. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this one. Alright guys, so the first topic we're going to be talking about is jigs. A jig is such a versatile term. Um, today we're going to be talking about flipping jigs, casting jigs, skipping jigs, just kind of that base style, arky head jigs. Um, jigs are so versatile in the way that they can be fished really anywhere. You know, docks, laydowns, trees or I guess it's laid on grass, um, all types of things like that. The jig is just an awesome bait. And yeah, that's why I love using the pre-spawn, and it gets big bites. You hear all the time, it really is true. Jigs really do produce big bites. So yeah, let's dive in deep on the jigs, the colors and jigs I like to use. And yeah, let's get into that now. All right, guys, so my preferred jig of choice is the Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter. Um, a lot of guys use this bait. It's a very good bait. Um, it's a tungsten head jig. I really like that compact style jig. Um, just a lot better, gets through a lot of the structure really well, gets through wood and dock really, really well. And yeah, so I'm kind of fishing, these have pretty stiff weed guards. I would uh, recommend a pretty stiff weed guard when you're fishing around the dock and the wood than when you're flipping the grass with a jig, which is not quite really what we're trying to do in the pre-spawn because the grass isn't growing yet. But when you're flipping with the grass, you want a little lighter weed guard and a horizontal line tie is what we have here for wood. You want a vertical for the grass. So yeah, let's get into the different colors and um, how I like to fish each other. Alright guys, the first color we're going to be talking about is the green pumpkin base color. It is a phenomenal color when you're fishing clear water and trying to imitate a bluegill. Um, this guy's kind of got some blue swirls in it and a little bit of brown in there too. Any sort of mix of variations between green pumpkin, you know, brown, that kind of stuff, imitating a bluegill is really good. You know, like I said, I'm fishing this pretty clear water trying to imitate a bluegill. So, you know, really natural lakes when their forage is bluegill, this is where I'm going to. So yeah, that's the first color. The second color I have is again it's a green pumpkin base with some more chartreuse in there so this is like a green pumpkin chartreuse this color is called brim um actually for the outcast jig dynap sorry i forgot to mention color but this one's called money craw really love this color but yeah this brim is really awesome when i've got that dark tanicky water but it's kind of clear still if that makes sense so you know when i'm flipping with this guy i'm you know it's when i got a dark bottom i think the bass see the chartreuse very very well and just a lighter green pumpkin color is really good so I'll be using this one a lot in Wisconsin with the chartreuse on the bottom side because it's got a lot of dark lakes there. But yeah, that's kind of that color. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next color. All right, so the next color I consider is kind of a PB&J or just a really dark brown color. Um, these show up pretty well in, I wouldn't say clear water, but like stained clear water, if that makes sense again. Um, like maybe two to three feet clarity. Those are really good. Those dark, bold browns and purples really show up well in that kind of color. Um, and good in that kind of color water and that's what I'm leaning towards those types of jig colors but yeah and the last jig color is just the tried and true black and blue um, it's when you're flipping the dirty stuff you know up shallow milk and docks lay downs and I'm flipping a black and blue um, probably less than one for clarity I like the black and blue jig it's just an awesome awesome color so yeah that's kind of the summary of the jig colors now let's get into the trailers all right, guys. So now we're gonna talk about the trailers. Um, I kind of base my trailers off of the water temperature, if that makes sense. If we're in the lower 40s, you know, I'm gonna lean more towards a trailer with less kick. You know, when it's falling, it's not fluttering. It's just gonna be like gliding like that. You know, when you're moving on the bottom, it's not kicking. It's just kind of gliding. Very slow, very subtle, but it does make the difference whether the bass are active or not. Um, but yeah. So when the water's colder, I'm leaning more towards baits like the Missile Baits D Bomb. And the reaction innovation sweet beaver, which I'll pop right here. Um, yeah, D bomb is a very good bait because it doesn't have much kick with the claws. It's very streamlined still on the jig, and it kind of falls in like a gliding motion, which I think is really good in the clear water, or in the clear water and in like the cold water. Um, so yeah, I'm leaning more towards baits that don't have much kick. So your beaver style baits, um, that sort of thing. When the water gets warmer, I tend to go more towards kicking style baits like the. Um, Rage Menace from Strike King, and especially the Exo and Adrenaline Craw. That's a new awesome bait I love. Um, very awesome um, jig trailer. Super, a lot of kick. Like I said, you're pitching in there, you're, you're kicking down, you're moving it quick up. It's very erratic. That's when the water temps, I'd say, more in the 55 to 60 degree range is when I'm you know, going towards those types of things. Um, you know, In between, you can kind of choose a few different ways. I normally go with like a craw-based trailer that's got a little bit of kick, like these muscle back craws. They have a little bit of kick. And then also kind of a sleeper is a Demiki Knockout. Very, very good um, jig trailer. Just, again, doesn't have too much kick, just a little, very subtle kick. So 
yeah, that's kind of jig trailers. That's what I like to use in those situations and the water temperature. Like I said, water temperature is a huge part in the pre-spawn. So base your trailer and your presentation off the water temperature and what kind of structure you're fishing. So yeah, that's kind of the cover coverage of all the baits for jigs. Now let's get into the rod reel. All right, guys, so the rod reel setup I like to use for jigs is a 7.2 heavy fast tip Shimano Zodius. Really, I'd say anything from the 7.1 heavy range to 7.3 heavy is a good jig rod. Um, you know, you, you're, when you're flipping the jigs, you want to get them out and you want to have some backbone to set the hook on these because the jigs have thick hooks, so you want to dig them in the you know dig them in their mouth when you set the hook. So yeah, and then I got that paired up with a 7.5 to one reel. Really, any reel that's in the 7.5 range to 8 to one range is a really good reel for you know flipping and pitching and casting a jig around. And you know, this is kind of personal preference here, but I like the braid to a leader. So I got 30 pound Suffix 131 to a 20 pound Seaguar leader. Um, you know, a lot of guys like straight floral or braid you kind of got to sample with each one but i really like the braid because you can pick up those super subtle bites and really like feel the bottom if you're dragging you know it's rock if you know it's a stump it's not spongy at all it's really really sensitive so yeah that's kind of the jig setup but uh yeah really personal preference on the setup but i have to say definitely a heavy rod and definitely a higher speed reel but yeah let's get in texas rigs now that's everything for the jigs all right guys now let's get into texas rigs um let's go into the baits and yeah let's dive into them talk about them a little bit more so you know, I'm using a lot of Texas rigs when I'm fishing grass in um, the pre-spawn. You know, sometimes the coontail will stay out in the lakes in the milfoil. They'll still stay healthy, and that's what I'm going towards the Texas rig. It goes really clean through that stuff. Um, basically, anything that's too gnarly for the jig, like a super gnarly, it's gnarly laydown or a super gnarly patch of grass, that's what I'll go towards the Texas rig. And um, it's also really good when they're you want to downsize kind of, but use the same presentation. The jig is bulky. And that's what I'll lean towards the texture as well. So yeah, um, you know, I'm using it in grass, inside grass lines, outside grass lines, you know, pitching it at lily root pads um, that are coming up, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's a very versatile bait. Again, you can really cast it anywhere you want to, fish it any way you want to. And uh, yeah, let's get into some of the baits I use for those and um, talk to you more about the setup of the bait. So yeah, let's get into that. All right, guys, first things first we're going to talk about is the hook. Um, I'm a firm believer of the ringed hooks, as you can see here. Um, you know, VMC makes a good one. Gamagatsu makes a good ringed hook. With the ringed hook, you get a few advantages. You get, I believe, deeper penetration in their mouth when you hook them. We get more of the meaty versus, like, the outside just skin hook. And it really helps your bait move freely. Like, I'm grabbing the ring here, and I can move it all the way around versus if traditional there's no movement at all. So you get a lot more action out of the bait and I believe it hooks them way better. So yeah, that's why I choose the ring. Um, it's kind of, you gotta kind of experiment with it, personal preference again, but I really like the ring. Um, usually I'm using a four out to a three out hook. Kind of again, depends on the size of the bait, whatever you're throwing. Um, but yeah, normally I'm pairing that up with again, a half ounce texture weight or three eighth ounce, sometimes all the way to a quarter if I'm fishing really shallow. Um, but yeah, normally 90% of the time I am pegging um, my weight just kind of a confidence thing, and I believe, you know, when you're fishing the laydowns and fishing docks, it, it gets hung up if it's not pegged, so most of the time I'm pegging my weight in the pre-spawn, um, but yeah, another little trick, tip and trick too, is if you're in a really pressure lake that a lot of guys are throwing Texas rigs, you can add, um, different kind of mods to them, and one of my favorite mods is the bead, um, the bead creates a little more noise, a glass bead, it's noisy, it's just kind of have a different approach and different presentation for the fish to see. So I think that's a really great mod. Um, I used that actually in a tournament on Gull Lake and that helped us catch a ton of fish in this pretty crowded spot. Um, so yeah, let's get into the baits now. Um, the first bait I like to talk about, again, same as the jig is this Rage Menace. It has been an absolute staple for me year in and year out for years. So this is probably my top three favorite texture baits at the moment. Um, just super easy, super simple, just two really good kickers. Again, I'm using this when the water's warmer, they're very active. Um, you know, one of my favorite, um, baits too, same with the jig, is the Adrenaline Craw. It's again, a very, very good bait for kicking. Um, this is, this one doesn't have as much kick, but it's a little bit bigger presentation. So yeah, those are kind of my warmer water baits. Now for the colder water. For colder water baits, I really, really like the Big Bite Baits Craw Tube. It's a very, very interesting bait because it's a hollow, so it's a tube, but it has a little craw legs on the back of it. So, um... It's really, really good for getting through cover, like very streamlined. It can go in and out of cover really, really quick, really, really efficient. And just overall is a different look to the bass, and it's very good in cold water because it just it stands up because it's hollow. So, yeah, it's a 
awesome bait. Love it for cold water. Love it for when I'm soaking a bait too in grass patches, you know, on docks and lay down. So yeah, great texture bait. Probably my favorite texture bait is Scratchu. But yeah, so that's kind of everything for the text rig. I really stick to those two baits at all between the Rage Menace and the uh, Crotchu. Those are my two favorite text rig baits. And uh, yeah, now let's get into the setup and uh, where I like to throw this bait. All right, guys, so for the setup, I'm running a 7.2 medium heavy fast Shimano X Pride. Um, really, any 7.1 to 7.3 medium heavy fast or heavy fast, kind of depends on how heavy the rod is is good for Texas rigs. Um, I love this rod because it's a little bit beefier of a medium heavy, but it's not quite a heavy, if that makes sense. It's like a medium heavy plus. So that's why this rod is perfect for Texas rigs, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm running again, the same thing, personal preference, but I'm running braid to leader, 30 pound braid, 20 pound leader, same exact thing. You can just feel way more, and it's way more line efficient. And then I got that paired up with a dial which tool elite, seven to one reel. Again, anything from seven to eight speed reel is awesome for Texas rigs and jigs. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the setup. But like I said, make sure you're sticking with a you know heavier rod. Don't go down to a medium. Go stay within a medium heavy or a heavy. And uh, yeah, just make sure it's something you can drive the hooks home when you do hook them. So yeah, that's kind of the setup of the Texas rig. Now let's talk about where I'm gonna throw the Texas rig versus the jig. Okay, I kind of touched on it before, but let's get more in depth. So I'll give you some scenarios here. So let's say you know I'm going down the bank and I realize there's a lot of coontail on the bottom, and the jig there's a lot of slime in there. So the jig's getting hung up. You know, it's really sticking to it. That's when I'll go towards the Texas rig. It's a lot cleaner through that junk and a lot more efficient. So you're not picking weeds off every single cast. I've done that before where on the jig, on the weed guard, they get stuck every single time. So that Texas rig is very, very simple and efficient at getting those out. That's one of the scenarios. Another scenario is when it's just too thick for the jig. Like if you're getting hung up in laydowns, it's just getting too thick for the jig. Then you go to the Texas rig so you can get in and out cleaner and more efficient. Because you know, when the pre spawn, when the bass are so spread out over a big flat or over a lot of shoreline, you want to be efficient on finding those fish, you know. You'll break it down with the moving baits. Once you find them, you want to locate them with the with the slower baits. So, you know, being efficient and being the key is super awesome. So, yeah, that's kind of the whole scenario and whole rundown of jig fishing and tech rig fishing for fishing the pre-spawn. Um, you know, you're looking for, th for those bays that warm up quickest with docks, laydowns, grass, whatever it may be, and, you know, you're going to locate these once you find a group of fish and you're going to pick them apart with these baits. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you enjoy this style, um, that's why you're here on the channel. This is more of a laboratory, you know, learning channel. Learning channel. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing this all year, breaking down lakes, breaking down seasons, you know, different types of bodies of water, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for more awesome content. Be hit the subscribe button and uh, follow our Instagram and TikTok. So yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.